Fox News senior Capitol Hill producer Chad Pergram. Chad, lots going on all weekend long, and it keeps, go keeps coming the news. So everyone was saying that after President Trump announced that John Kelly was out, uh, Nick Ayers, the vice president's chief of staff, was almost certain to get the job. But it turns out that's not the case. Tell us about that. Well, you know, I was getting some hand signals late last week that it wouldn't be Ayers or that uh, he might kind of go sideways here. You hear a lot of these things here on Capitol Hill, especially when Capitol Hill players might be the successor. Uh, one name who is part of the administration right now but has a lot of ties to Capitol Hill is Mick Mulvaney. He is the budget director. Of course, he used to be a Republican mm -hmm. congressman from South Carolina and was the co-founder of the Freedom Caucus. The other name that we've been he hearing a little bit about this weekend is Mark Meadows. He's the Republican congressman from North North Carolina, who kind of co-founded and, and leads the, the, the Freedom Caucus right now. I think that you're going to see an audition in the next few days about this as to maybe who might have the president's back as he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Democrats and even a lot of Republicans on Capitol Hill as they try to keep the government funded come uh, the 22nd of December. That's the deadline when they have to, to fund the government by. A and who is whispering in the president's ear? Uh, who is actually maybe fighting against some, quote, establishment Republicans on Capitol Hill? And if you're someone like Mark Meadows, Maybe it isn't as fun to be in the minority. You know, it's one thing if you're going to be, you know, throwing bombs at the Democrats here, you know, from the minority. But some people think that the Freedom Caucus is weakened in the minority, and all they might do is divide the Republican Party. So, so Mark Meadows might be a player there. Mick Mulvaney has been mentioned mm -hmm. potentially for this job for, for months off and on. So, Chad, tell us about that. I'm interested in your point there about the establishment role here. Last week on Swamp Watch, we did a, an investigation into, into what I described as some of the establishment um, players inside the White House trying to frustrate the president's populist agenda. Um, we got a strong reaction to that. How does this play out? Do you get a sense that there are establishment um, players trying to make sure that their guy or woman gets this job? Well, look at how it could play into the government shutdown question here. If you have a deal that is cut with Democrats and some Republicans that doesn't get the president what he wants, which is ultimately this border wall, or at least isn't something satisfactory uh, what he wants that, that uh, you know, matches his campaign promise, you could see that being a problem. And that's why I describe this as kind of an audition. You know, Stephen Mnuchin, who's the mm -hmm. Treasury Secretary, has been mentioned. The president has tweeted in just the past hour so that he's interviewing a lot of top people and uh, he hopes to have somebody good. You know, it wasn't that long ago that Kevin McCarthy, who's going to be the minority leader, was somebody whose name was batted around. But it seems like, uh, you know, that trifecta of Mnuchin, maybe Meadows and maybe Mulvaney, you know, that's, that seems to be the wheelhouse that he's working in right now. And how they deal with Capitol Hill, that's going to be central to the whole thing. God, there's going to be a lot of reaction if it's Mnuchin, I'll tell you that. Anyway, well, last question, Chad. Just want to um, look ahead to this, this meeting. Are we still expecting this meeting between the president, Nancy Pelosi, and Chuck Schumer on the border wall? And right. the further question that I wanted to ask you is, is and, and forgive me if this sounds like a dumb question, but I know a lot of the audience are asking it. Why do we need congressional approval for this, given that everyone agrees from the president down, that, that certainly on, on his side of the fence, that the situation at the border is a national security issue and the money involved, $5 billion, is actually tiny in comparison to the overall federal discretionary budget, the defense budget, which everyone want to look at. Why can't he just take the money from the existing defense budget and use that for the wall? Well, the founders were very clear when they gave the power of the purse to the legislative branch. They didn't want the executive branch to just take the money willy-nilly and move it around. That's why they put that power with the legislative branch. They have already approved the defense budget uh, for this fiscal year. That was one of the five spending bills which they have approved. And so you can't go back in, you know, ex post facto and say, we're going to move some money from defense and move it over here. One of the seven bills that remains unfunded is the Department of Homeland Security funding bill, and that's where most of the wall money would reside. Now, there's always a little bit of, uh, of money you can move around behind the scenes, but Congress, you know, has the power of the purse. The founders were absolutely clear about that. They didn't want abuse by the executive. And so if Congress has already appropriated uh, what the Pentagon is getting, you can't say, okay, we're going to move that over the Department of Homeland Security. Therein lies the problem. And the DHS funding bill is one of the seven that remains outstanding. You're right, this meeting well, is on I've... for Tuesday with uh, Nancy Pelosi mm -hmm. and Chuck Schumer. Uh, don't forget that a year ago, September, it was President Trump. When he met with them, he cut a deal with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer to keep the government open and went over the heads of the Republicans, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan. They're deal makers, and Nancy Pelosi knows that she cannot start being the prospective Speaker of the House on January 3rd with a government shutdown. So she has to deal. 
One last point, and this is very right. critical. Republicans this past summer, on not one but two different occasions, defeated, mind you, defeated bills in the House of Representatives which would have provided full funding for the border wall. There is not the right mixture of just Republicans in the House to keep the government open to fund a bill, uh, to, to pass a bill that funds the wall or one that doesn't fund the wall. They need Democratic support, frankly, in both chambers, and it seems like the House of Representatives might be more important considering what the history was on trying to fund the border wall on those two pieces of legislation mm -hmm. this past summer, Steve. Chad, thank you so much for all My of pleasure. that. Um, so much going on. Always great to see you. Appreciate that.